Hello, welcome to the MRI unit at the Department of Psychology at Royal Holloway University. My name is Ari Lingeswaran. I'm the MRI Operations Officer here. And this is the Cubic MRI unit, and we are part of a consortium with uh, three other partner universities, Brunel University, University of Surrey, and Roehampton University. And this is the scanner that we have. It's a Siemens Tim Trio system that we have, mainly dedicated for research. So therefore, it's easier for researchers to get access to the scanner. So, when participants come in to take part in an experiment, the first thing we normally offer them is a pair of earplugs for them. MRI scanners are fairly loud, so we want them to be comfortable while they're doing the experiment, so the earplugs will minimize the noises that they're going to be hearing. When they come in, they will lie on this bed, and we ensure that they are comfortable so that they can keep their heads still throughout the whole time, which is important for the MRI scanning procedure. And we put this a little head coil on top of them. It will go just like that here, so they will be able to see through it. And we place a mirror above them like that. And through the mirror, they will be able to see what is actually presented on the screen in the background. And then we will raise the bed. And we will take them in. Most of the research take place here involves brain scanning. That means functional imaging. So there are lots of different types of projects that we take. Some of the researchers interested in uh, observing the visual cortex, which is the back part of the brain. Okay, so therefore that's responsible for vision. So whatever we see will have some kind of information processed in the back part of your brain, in the visual cortex. Some people will be interested in studying emotions. So for those kind of projects, they will be showing some uh, neutral scenes and happier scenes and sad scenes or happy faces, sad faces. And then they will ask the participants to rate the emotions that they feel while they are being scanned. There are some other studies used for marketing purposes as well, just to see how people are interested in receiving or seeing images of brand names. So that how appealing a brand should be in order to uh, attract the consumer in that way. So sometimes we use those kind of research as well. In conjunction with the MRI scanner, we are also using other equipment in order to support our research uh, work. Uh, sometimes we use them to deliver the stimulus to the participant. Also, sometimes we collect responses from the participants. This is the pair of MRI compatible headphones. So therefore, we can safely use them within the MRI scanner. They go inside the ears, therefore they would be able to deliver very fine auditory stimulus in there. So people will be able to receive something like tones, therefore with various pitches, so they will be able to identify the noises where they're coming from. Or you can also produce stereo, so that means you can identify whether it's coming on the left or coming on the right hand side. So depending on the research that they're using, they will be able to program what of the stimulus that's necessary and then they will be able to use that. So these are a pair of response boxes. So when participants are required to make a response, they will be able to use this button box and you'll be able to place your fingers like that. And so it goes from all the way from zero up to nine. So we would be able to code any digits up to between zero, zero to nine, nine According to this combination, we will be able to use any coding if you want. This is the eye tracking system that we use for research. This is the screen where we will be projecting the images. Okay, so this is going to sit at the back end of the scanner. And this one projects infrared radiation. That will be reflecting off the eyes. And this is the camera that will be recording the eye movements. So if somebody is interested in moving the eyes to different positions and all of that, they will be able to record saccadic movements. Or 
it also to check if the participant is fixating as they are supposed to be. When somebody's in the scanner, the very first thing we do is something called a localizer scan. All it does, it takes three images of somebody's brain in the three different planes that we get in here. So this is like the sagittal plane, this is the coronal plane, and this is the axial plane. We use these simple images in order to position our region of interest, so to speak, the slices where we want to collect the data from. So this grid here shows you where which part of the brain that we're looking for. So in this particular study, we were collecting the whole brain images in 28 slices, so to speak, is what we see here. So if you look at the other images, so this is a typical example of an image that we normally get from a functional scan. So you will see there are four, uh, four rows of six images in each one of those, and then four down here. So altogether, there are 28 slices, so to speak, of the brain that we are getting. And we will be continuously collecting for the duration of the scan. So sometimes the scans will be for about four minutes. Sometimes it can up to be about 20 minutes, depending on what the researcher is looking for and what type of information we're collecting. The size varies. And if you can, if I scroll up, on these images, you'll be able to see small changes actually happening inside the brain. We are not going to be analyzing this data by looking at them. So this is going to be analyzed using statistical programming technology. Therefore, the actual looking, uh, actual resolution of the image is not important and this concept. Okay, so so these are not very clear images, but that holds a lot of information for us, which we can extract using computational programming. And this is one of the images that you can see. So these are a typical functional imaging. As we can see, it's not very clear at all, but we're not really interested in getting a good high resolution images of the functional scanning because MRI imaging takes time. So that is the compensation that we have to give in order to get the temporal resolution where we can get a lot of data quickly. So in that aspect, we lose the in-plane imaging resolution here. But in addition to the functional scanning, we also collect an anatomical scan which we can see here, which is normally a three-dimensional anatomical scan, but we acquire it in one plane, goes from one side of the ear to the other side of the ear. You can see an image here appearing from in this way. So you can see the earlobe here, and we are starting to cut into the bone. You can even see the lens of the eyes we have in here. And this is the brain structure that we are looking for. And this is halfway in between. So in between the two hemispheres of the, the brain that we are looking for here. So you'll be able to see the different structures of the brain extremely clearly with these kind of high resolution anatomical scans. I said this is a three-dimensional image, therefore we could also see it in a 3D view as well. So these are the three-dimensional images that we are getting here. So we will be able to scroll back and forth in any direction possible, and then we will be able to see what the brain structure is like that. Thanks for watching the video. If you are interested in our research to find out further, Click the links below that's given to you and we hope to see you at the Department of Psychology at Royal Holloway sometime soon.